Corn Warriors is presented by Pivot Bio. I'm Nate Eden, and welcome to Corn Warriors Season 6. This year, we are excited to have three returning warriors and three new contestants, all competing for the title Corn King. Hailing from Chesapeake, Virginia, is the Admiral, Heath Cutrell. A new competitor to the Corn Warriors, Heath is a red-blooded, adaptive, self-starting farmer with a drive like no one else. Heath's got a lot to prove this season. Do you think he's up to the challenge? Also new to Corn Warriors are the Crusaders, Levi and Jenna Ochsner from Double O Farms in Sutton, Nebraska. Bringing new meaning to the word farmily, the Ochsners are a powerhouse husband and wife duo with two young sons that can't wait to get involved in the farm. They raise beef cattle and farm irrigated land that has been in the family for generations. Roaring in from Madison, Alabama is Chad Henderson, the bull, on his second season of Corn Warriors. Farming alongside his father, Mike, and his son, Jackson, Chad continually brings energy and gratitude to his operation every single day. And did we mention, he drag races. Chad's up against some tough competition, but he's revving up for the challenge and bringing his A game. From Cedarville, Ohio, returning for his third season on Corn Warriors, we have the beast, Corey Alley. Corey farms over 8,000 acres and runs Advanced Yield, his crop inputs and consulting company. Running one of the most versatile farming operations in the nation, Corey consistently puts up a fight, and this year he's coming for the throne. And finally returning for season six, after being with the show since the beginning, is Dan Lipkis, the Hammer, hailing from Oregon, Illinois, farming alongside his son David. Dan was a runner up for Corn King last season. Dan's mentality is all about perseverance. Will he overcome the odds and finally take home the crown after six years? Season five was a tough year for farmers with dramatic weather events, rising input prices, and global uncertainty. But as always, the American farmer soldiers on. And the question is, which one of these farmers will win Corn Warriors season six? Are we starting? Is this a yeah. start? This, this, is, is, this is it. Uh, welcome to another season. We back again. Who, who would have thunk it? I'm Chad Henderson, Madison, Alabama. We're gonna talk about corn. I think the next, this whole year, we're gonna talk a lot about maybe soil, nutrition, uh, plant health, go in depth on that part of it. So here in just a few, we're probably gonna go look at some corn, get some emergent scores. We'll see how it did. On the first we planted, we have about 700 acres planted to date. It's the 20th of April. We planted about three and a half days, and it's been wet. Y'all, we're getting, we've been getting hammered. So we're here today with Jackson, gonna do a little bit of spraying, but wind jumped up. It's awful windy, so we'll wait, see if it dies down this evening. Maybe not get last this year. Maybe not get last this year, you know? As yeah. always go. Get Look, place. I can't go nowhere but up, right? Yeah. Just, right? I mean, all you can do is suck again, right? All you can do is suck again, you know? <laughs> I don't even have anybody to pick on. So when we fire back up, you know, we'll run 18 to 20 hours a day and we'll just plant a crop. It won't be near as easy as they do in the ice states, you know. It ain't as near as easy it is for Dan. You know, I think Dan plants all his in a few days, you know. Maybe Corey Atley, Corey does. I think Corey gets all his, because he can plant all his, because it's all in his backyard. I mean, it's all square, and it's all right there in the backyard, right? Guys and gals up in Nebraska, I think, don't know anything about them, because I sure don't pick on them. And, uh, well, I ain't picked on Heath yet, but I think he's about done. But he'll need a little extra time anyway, because he uses all red stuff. So we, we, can, we can just keep, keep on going. Let's go look at some corn. You know, nothing we do seems like picks up a bunch of bushels. Five bushels, huge. You know, we're looking for one bushel, two bushel, three bushel. All the farmers, the 
across the United States, I still believe we're the best farmers in the world. We're feeding these countries, you know, so we're just fine tuning these. You look at, we're picking this thing apart. And we're trying to be as efficient as possible. You know, hey, I picked up three bushels and I saved $5. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's go out here and see what the stand looks like. Man, I don't know, it's probably had seven inches of rain on it. And it's planted, I'm pretty sure it's 29th of March. But we'll just see how it does. Again, we dropped this at 28,000. So we'll mark us off 17 and a half foot. There's a clod right there we can start at. Yep. Something to mark it with. There's eight foot right there. Come on down to that. Yep. Keep that clod checked. I must, I must have got lucky. We've had some cold mornings, you know, for us, cool still. And you can see where it's dinged it up some. But it'll be good, it's got a good root system on it. This was run on a strip till. So we'll go back over there and get the shovel and we'll dig a few plants and look at it. Look at it. Got a shovel. Trusty shovel just come to me. So, we're gonna pull the same stump we pulled last year. We're gonna look at this plant here and then we're gonna put him back in the hole. And we'll see if we can pick, pick some of this root system apart. Look at how this has started. If you don't think that that ain't far from grabbing hold to the tube two, then you're mistaken. There you go. Pivot by old corn looks good. So right now we just loaded up Pivot Bio. The Proven 40 product, mm -hmm. which is very cool. We're out looking at one of our Pivot Bio plots. I like the looks of it. It's not leaching away in the groundwater. It's not running off when we get a hard, heavy rain. Not bad, huh? Not bad. The Proven 40 is doing its job. It's that missing link that keeps my plant where it needs to be. Pivot Bio passed the test. So I feel far, like. this the Pivot Bio is checking all the boxes. Yeah. I'm Heath Cutrell. Welcome to Chesapeake, Virginia. Weather is not so pretty this morning. We are going to plant some corn today, I'm hoping. And all of a sudden, my tractor's not working as it should, naturally. We are farming in southeastern Virginia, northeastern North Carolina, around 5,000 acres. We normally start around the 12th, anywhere from the 1st to the 12th, but we've had some few weather events. Up till now, it's been good weather as far as planting. We're trying to work out the bugs on the planter and the tractor. Again, we had a few mishaps over yesterday afternoon. Wheels angle sensor on my 400 decided it wanted to take a break yesterday afternoon. And here we are. So this award was the first one, the first year that we ever entered the NCGA. A buddy of mine had talked me into trying to enter NCGA because we always obviously pushing some high yields. 2015, you can see we did 200 and roughly 70 bushels to the acre. Uh, we've been very successful in making better yields through the way. This 2021 crop was 391 bushels and uh, extremely proud of it. It might not be 400, but we're obviously easy and on the way. Last year, I think this place was at like 230. Uh, if I can do that again, that's hitting a home run for this land. Straight clay. You can't kick a dent in the dirt, but we pulled under for zone builder uh, rippers, break the hard pan. If you can get a good solid seed bed, you know, that's giving that plant the best opportunity to emerge. As we all know, as farmers, emerging is step one of its life. So we're close to Atlantic Beach, and these birds smell that fresh dirt. Our fields are full of worms, which is a good thing, as we all know. So when we turn this dirt over, we're actually, you know, moving these worms around and they're up here taking our good guys from us. Little cleanup crew, I guess, if you will. 
these tractors are getting bigger and heavier and combines are bigger and heavier and grain carts. People don't realize how much compaction is actually uh, being involved with all this equipment. Along with that, extremely hard rains is just as bad as, you know, heavy equipment. We're running a true tandem on the, the first tractor with the color packer behind it, busting up knots. The second tractor behind him is pulling a 255 Tiger Mate Case International Field Cultivator with a roller behind it, uh, actually pushing the knots in the ground so this planter isn't jumping around. And behind us is a drain digger laying these drains from ditch to ditch so that when it does have a hard rain, like I was saying, it gives the water a place to go. 100% red, I bleed red. The only thing green I want, like I told you, is $100 bills. Uh, we've been using BASF, you know, their fungicides. We've really fell in love with the Veltima. So we have a new molecule in it called methamphetamine Instead of saying that, we've changed that name to Revisol. Not only does it move to the tip, but you'll still have longevity and coverage throughout the rest of the leaf. We recommend BASF. It lasts longer and works harder to make sure that you're covered from head to toe. I'm Levi Auctioner, and this is my son Crawford Auctioner, and Stetson Auctioner, and my wife Jenna. We're the auctioners we farm in South Central Nebraska. Our kids are the sixth generation to live right here on this yard. Our family's been farming here since 1885. We farm commercial corn and soybeans. Today is May 4th. May 4th. Today's May 4th. Our name of our farm is Double O Farms. It uh, was founded by my dad and my grandpa. We have a black Angus cattle herd, some red Angus, all Angus though. We have a premium beef product that we sell to friends and family, and then we also ship to all 50 states. Also diversified in that, we have a family crop insurance business. It's definitely a team effort every day. Um, you know, Stetson and Crawford are out here with us a lot, you know, just teaching them the way of life. They'll never learn to farm or want to come back to farm unless they're immersed in it now. I mean, Stetson already knows so much about farming, it blows my mind. What's your favorite part, Stetson? Four viewers. Four and wheelers. We've had three inches of rain in the last five days, but prior to that, it's probably been one of the driest springs that I've been a part of. We moved some cows today, it made it pretty muddy, but honestly, we prayed for the rain. I'm, I'm thankful for the mud today, today yeah. only. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's Nebraska. If you don't like the weather, stick around, it'll change. <laughs> Calving season's kind of winding up, so it's time for all of the cows to be out of our yard and back on their summer pastures. And uh, it works great to have the cattle in the farming, so like we can't be in the field, so we can go get some of this cattle work done and uh, kind of stay ahead of things. Yep, so this field is our first field of corn we planted on uh, on my birthday, actually. April 19th, it's about 30 acres, and this is the only field we did that day, so the corn is up. This is pretty good ground being so close to the river, um, kind of some river bottom, a lot of silt loam. I came out here and we fertilized it about a week before we planted it. We run all liquid, a little 10340 thiosulfate, and you know, some zinc, and this particular field here is no-till, we just, sliced it in on some old bean ground. And uh, I do, you know, consult with several different people. I mean, it kind of takes a army to, to, to get the right recipe. Levi's pretty good about testing new things and then making sure that whatever he's testing proves that it'll have a good return on our investment before scaling it over yeah. the operation. I'm always looking to do something better, you know, and, and planning in particular is not about, you know, who can do it the fastest, it's who can do it the best, so.
And being a generational farm and still farming very closely with our family who's worked very hard and seen yeah. the worst that farming has ever had to offer, yeah. there's a fine line between respecting that and learning from the years, the hard years that they saw and investments in new things. So much rain, we probably won't be in the field for at least another week. We're sitting pretty good where we're at. I, I wish the temperatures were warmer than what they are right now, but uh, we'll be fine. We're actually 100% done planting soybeans. We just have some corn left. Yep. So we're not panicking right. because of the weather. And honestly, we'll, we'll follow this through. We'll see if the early corn or the late corn is better. I mean, right now, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Copperhead concaves, to me, are the only way to go. This is a real return on our investment. And when we went to these, we took an automatic increase all the way to 5,300 bushels an hour, which is incredible. Sometimes we don't have enough truck to keep up with what this combine can harvest. Use less horsepower, less fuel, and did a better job cleaning. It's second to none. Today is Friday the 13th of May. We've got about 1,000 acres of corn done, about 3,000 acres of corn to go. Uh, hopefully it should be done here in a few days, as long as the weather holds out. Our number one goal is to always break our own personal records, our own farm records. Wherever that shakes us out in the competition, so be it. You know, it's, it's always a tough group of farmers. We've got some new faces on. They're gonna be tough. Every year I gotta bring my A game. You know, I, I never looked to try to win the state of Ohio or rank nationally or win Corn Warriors. It's, or can I improve on what I did the year before? Mm -hmm. oh, we've been uh, cutting back more and more acres from chisel plowing. Like this ground here, uh, we just chisel plow the uh, compaction spots. Then we come in with a blue jet 20 inch knife and hydrous bar. That's when we inject the nitrogen. Number one big takeaway, you know, how efficient we're being with our nitrogen now. Adding more sulfur into the program, trying to keep that balance, walking a fine line to keep the pH up with the sulfur and utilizing the nitrogen. That's one thing I feel like we've been able to do very, very well. With products like, you know, Pivot Bio Proven 40 now, we got it on every acre this year. With the price of nitrogen, you know, we're, we're gonna need some more. You know, we didn't go hog wild with the nitrogen this year. We don't any year, but, you know, we, we did cut back a few more pounds this year, and I don't know if we're gonna come back with any at all. So if not, we at least have the comfort of knowing that the Proven 40 is on there. We got all the plots done yesterday, did all them. A lot of nice different plots. Uh, I think there's about 16 different hybrids, all the way from 107 day all the way up to 120. So we get to see them on 20 inch rows. Was able to put out some of the short, short stature corn. So we got 111 day corn that will be short corn. So that's gonna be fun to follow, follow along this year and see, see how that works out. We uh, ran the population all the way from uh, 32,000 all the way to 60,000. It's a pretty big extreme, but we kind of want to find the bottom and the top on both of them. Farmers deserve a nitrogen that works as hard as they do. One that stays with the crop until the job is done. It's time to turn to a better nitrogen. With Pivot Bio.
Platte 22, here we are. We're late. Started May 9th or 10th, got done last year May 9th, I think it was. David's birthday is May 9th, so kind of behind the eight ball a little bit, but we got really good weather right now. For the last three days, it's been 90 to 92 degrees. That's not normal for us and really humid. Anyway, we're rolling. We had a couple tough days getting started. We always have some bugs, but my bugs seem to be bigger, longer, and hardier this year than they have been in the past. Anyway, we're trying a few new things. In that shuttle there, we actually have uh, some, it's, it's fish. It's ground up fish. So we're putting like two gallons of that in furrow. It's nasty, it stinks. I think the microbes are gonna think it's freaking candy though. It's filled with some fertilizer. We got some new things in that too. We'll talk about later if, uh, if it works out. <laughs> So, all right, we're gonna get back in the field. Let's we'll see you guys out there. day of planting. I guess it's Wednesday. We started Monday. First two days of planting. And it could be a couple of the worst I've ever had as far as uh, the first day we still planted 160 acres, but I was starting at daybreak and being late at dark and stopped a lot of the time. Oh, we had a fertilizer mix that went bad on me. Put it in one of my planter tanks that had a different product in it, but I drained it all out but it must not have got all out. So, note to everyone, if you're putting something in that you know is gonna have trouble, and I, I knew it was gonna have trouble, but I better flush the whole thing with water, and I know better, but I was out in the field, and I drained it out, I drained my lines, and I put 500 gallons of this other product in, I thought, ah, that's not enough, that's gotta, you know, there could have only been a gallon in there at the most. We ended up having to tear the whole system apart. When you, uh, you have a day like that, you begin to question yourself. I think I got a couple valves I gotta switch. One of the farmer dilemmas, we're planting, we're behind, we wanna keep going, so I don't want, to, don't want it to rain. That's this hand. On the other hand, I want it to rain because we put in some early beans, we snuck them in, go shower and they'd pop right through because they're knocking at the door. I didn't plant them very deep. One hand I want to read, one hand I don't. I guess one of my hands ought to be happy, right? I always say, you know, a farmer's always crying or complaining about something. And I don't know if crying or complaining is the right word, but we're always, uh, we're always hoping for better. Coming up next on Corn Warriors. Planting corn, keeping it real, I guess. You just gotta be mindful of everything right now. Now we're all achieving for better than 300. We're gonna cover this seed up, cause that's the one that's gonna whip Corey's ass. 